to any of our centers near you. Sickness is our own doing, either from the past back karma or this life karma. Mostly after initiation, you should not have sickness anymore. Just maybe eat something wrong, not knowing, or knowing but thinking, oh, just a little bit, doesn't matter. Maybe she should change her diet. Just eat what she herself cook, or, uh, you know, what she wants, you know. Uh, she herself cook or the nearby person cook and not to buy things from outside. Or maybe eat simple food. There are many diets that prescribe to get well. Yeah, nowadays, yeah? It's all over on internet and on Supreme Master Television. The practitioners should take care to eat pure food. And if you feel that you still have bad karma, then change to the karma-less food that I have taught you on the Supreme Master Television. To be sure, that will help you to lessen the bad karma. Initiation is to give you the privilege of enlightenment and to enter sainthood. But you are responsible to take care of that privilege. We all have to be responsible for our own self, especially after initiation. And you have been told what to do. You have been told how to protect yourself and how to even not to make any new bad karma. You make your own miracle. Just like when it's cold, you wear warm clothes. Mm -hmm. When you're dirty, you take a shower. Your mother taught you how. So if you don't do that, don't come running back to mother always when you are having a cold, sneezing or something else, etc. To love me is to do what is good for you not clinging to my physical body or presence, and then do everything else differently. So I want you to show me your love, not to talk about it. You know already that uh, Master Power take care of you, yeah? But you also must take care, huh? If the doctor gives you medicine, you don't take, and you keep going to the doctor again and say, please uh, bless her, please uh, cure her, how? Don't tell me you love me. Don't say anything like that. Just take care of yourself. When I see you well, happy, practicing diligently and progress in your spiritual practice, then I know you love me. Truly like that. Even you don't say it, I know it. Ego is our enemy, eh? Yes, when you do something, oh, I want to help you, I want to help you. And then when they help a little bit, they become big shot. The ego cheat them, say, oh, I do it, I do this, I do that. We have to subdue the ego before we can do anything big. Because if the ego is too big, we can't do anything. We are not one with the divine. And a little training like that, we should take it seriously. Because that's the first step to go higher into the higher dimension, higher level of practice. But no, very difficult to deal with the ego. So we have to check ourselves, okay? Check it all the time, every day. And what we're doing, whether it's correct or not, yeah? And listen to the ego is the worst thing you could do. <laughs> worst thing you could do to yourself. I just hope you learn from somebody else's lesson also. <laughs> yes. Because maybe it's not you now, but if you are in his position or her position, maybe you do the same stuff. You can't check it quick enough. The ego comes out before you even know where you are. <laughs> and then you can't check it fast enough. That's the problem. That's why you have to do the diary every day. But uh, that's also you can cheat, you know. <laughs> you would take that, no. Uh, something, no. Uh, misconduct, no. Ego, no. <laughs> Especially ego, no. No, a big no, and no, 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 no again. I don't have. Me? I have ego? No. <laughs> you know? These are for you to train yourself, truly checking you out, you see? So you don't uh, always feel too proud of yourself. Somebody gave me a very funny joke. It's a joke about the beginning of Eden. You know, in the beginning, God made whom? Adam. 
So he made Adam, yeah? And then Adam complained that he's lonely, yeah? He's alone, of course, eh? You should be happy that you're alone, no? I be happy all the time when I'm alone, my God. <laughs> Nobody know the blessing of being alone more than I do. Oh, I enjoy, 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 and I don't feel lonely at all. When I'm alone, then I just uh, am very blissful, you know, inside. And I'm very lazy to go out, very lazy to come even to see you. But I know you need to see me, so I come out. <laughs> And I also enjoy seeing you. It's not like that I don't enjoy seeing you. If you were not there, I would not come out. Thank God that you are there. <laughs> or maybe I just stay in the cave forever, who knows, you know? Oh, it feels so good, you don't want to go out. No. <laughs> no? A joke, huh? Oh. In the beginning, God made Adam, huh? And Adam complained that he's lonely. Yeah. So God said, okay, I will make a companion for you who will make you feel happy and not lonely. Good. God made? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> that won't be a joke. That will be trouble. <laughs> a joke cannot have Eve in there. She is serious, man. <laughs> she made him eat the apple against his will and he's stuck there forever. You know, all the men have the apple here? Most of them. <laughs> Some more, some less, you know? Okay. So, God made a... Yes. Apple. A dog. <laughs> apple. Apple exists before Adam comes. God made the apples before Adam, madam. <laughs> That's why when Adam came out, God said, don't eat the apple. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, God made a dog to accompany Adam with all the beautiful attributes, you know, loyalty, love, unconditional affection, you know, obedience, warmth, heart, companionship, everything. Yes. So Adam asked God, what shall I name him? Because I name all the animals already, but nothing like this one. What shall I name him? So God said, okay, since he is, you know, a reflection of me to accompany you, so you can call him dog, you know? <laughs> Opposite. <laughs> yeah, but because we have English at that time. In other languages, it might not be easy to translate that. It might not be the same, you know? Okay, it's English is convenient, huh? For God even to explain things. Okay, so... God made him a dog. Oh, of course, the dog is lovely, yeah? And Adam was very happy. Dog is happy too. And then after a while, God asked some angel to come down and check how is he doing, whether he's still lonely, is he progress, you know, in his spiritual practice, anything at all? Better character or anything? So God told some angel come down and check Adam's out. Oh, the angel came back reporting something that God is not very pleased with. The angel said to God, You know, ever since you gave him that dog as companion, he became arrogant, self-conceited, and very, very, uh, very uh, big ego. <laughs> and God said, How can that be? I gave him a loving, faithful, obedient companion. He should emulate that. Character, instead, how can he become arrogant? How can that be? So the angel say, yeah, because the dog listened to his every whim. <laughs> I always obey him and make him feel like the king of the universe. <laughs> yeah, that he feel like nobody better than him. The dog made him feel absolutely, you know, top. Yes, top of the world. That's why he became very arrogant. He thinks he's the best now. <laughs> he's the king of the whole universe. You know, that he's perfect, yes, and he's intelligent, and he's a, a master. Everything that is uh, impossible for a man. Uh, he has no humility anymore. Yes, he thinks he's the best, and he's the only one in the whole world now.
So God said, oh, that won't do. <laughs> that won't do. <clears throat> so he thought of a plan. Said, oh, okay, I know. I will make him another companion. Opposite will make him know that he is nobody. <laughs> so, can you think that God made now? The cat, that's correct. You know the story? Or you just guess? Guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know the cat, that's why. So he made him a cat. And from then on, whenever he looked into the cat's eyes, he feel he's imperfect. <laughs> and whenever he called the cat to come, the cat just ignore him. And he begin to feel unsure <laughs> of his mastership. <laughs> he begin to feel less and less confident every day. And slowly he feel like he was nobody. <laughs> Whenever the, he called, the cat didn't come. He told the cat what to do. The cat couldn't care less. And, you know, day in, day out like that. So his arrogance was off. Now God uh, told the angel come down and check him. Say, oh, he's better now, <laughs> my Lord. He doesn't think he's the top anymore. He doesn't think he's perfect anymore. He doesn't think he's anybody anymore. So God said, oh, that's good. God is very happy. And then Eden, you know, become happy again. And the man also happy. And the dog's also happy because the man feel contented now. You know, he's nobody anyway. He couldn't be any worse than nobody. So he's also begin to feel happy, you know, true happiness. And the dogs are very happy as usual. And the cat couldn't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> But I think uh, later God get to be more clever. He made a woman instead. <laughs> Even better than both the dog and the cat combined. Huh? Yeah. Since then, yeah, Adam behaved. <laughs> All right. Um, you happy now? Yeah. Mm. I see you in a while.